Why subscribe to this channel? Well, I will never waste your time. My photography is pretty good. Nobody else does the TP trunk test, and I promise I'll never sing. You don't want to hear me sing. In late 2008, during the Great Recession, Toyota launched the Venza in the United States. Considered somewhat of a high-riding Camry wagon, it didn't catch on, leaving the market in 2015. Now, in the midst of a raging pandemic, Venza is back. Apparently, it enjoys trying times, huh? Americans are big into crossovers and SUVs these days. Seems like better timing this go around. And there are two key differences now. The silhouette is sleeker and it's powered strictly by a hybrid powertrain in our market, something the old one didn't offer. Outside of North America, Venza is known by a different name. Harrier, and this is not the first time it's been renamed for our market. In fact, years before the original Venza showed up on our shores, we had the Harrier here. We just knew it as the original RX 300. Yeah, it was spiffed up and sold here as a Lexus. What we know as the second generation Venza is the fourth generation Harrier, which has been very popular in Japan and other countries all these years. Since little brother RAV4 is now the best selling passenger vehicle in the US, it makes sense to sell a more svelte urbane model to complement it. Both are built on the same architecture and share the same width and wheelbase, though Venza is some six inches longer and an inch lower. If RAV is the Camry of crossovers, Venza's the Avalon. Even though the ground clearance is about the same for both, the swept rear end give this more of a city slicker vibe. Its main competition is Chevy Blazer, Ford Edge, and Nissan Murano. Honda Passport skews more outdoorsy. As equipped, this mid-level XLE model retails for $39,200. A similarly equipped RAV4 hybrid XLE goes for $33,000, so there's a price to pay for style. Manufactured in Japan, it goes on sale in September of 2020. Venza gets the same powertrain as the RAV4 Hybrid. It starts with a 2.5-liter four-cylinder that by itself puts out 176 horsepower. But being a hybrid, there are electric motors for extra oomph, including one that powers the back wheels. All Venzas have electric on-demand all-wheel drive. There's no drive shaft running from the front. And unlike the all-wheel drive Prius, this system operates at all speeds. Total power is 219 horsepower. Toyota doesn't release torque figures on this powertrain. Startup is nearly always silent. In cold weather or hanging out in the driveway listening to the end of that NPR story, the engine might kick on, giving the dual exhaust finishers in back something to do. The transmission is the usual eCVT found in other Toyota hybrids. I would like to personally thank the engineers for installing a normal transmission selector, much better than a joystick. The battery is stashed under the back seat. Toyota says it's a newly developed lithium ion pack that's lighter and charges faster. There are drive modes, including an EV mode that lets you travel at low speeds when the battery is well charged, though the soon to be federally mandated pedestrian warning tone kind of defeats the sneaky intention. If slow and pokey is what comes to your mind when you think of hybrid performance, uh, not always. RAV4 hybrid is actually quicker than the standard powertrain. Venza will do zero to 60 in about seven and a half seconds. Not too bad. Up to 80% of the power can be sent to the rear wheels. And because electric motors have instant torque off the line, Venza feels peppier than it is. It's very drivable. This being a hybrid, you're probably curious how fuel efficient Venza is. Toyota's estimate is an average of 39 miles per gallon, just one MPG less than RAV4. Venza does weigh 110 pounds more. Keep in mind that the company's hybrid powertrains tend to perform more efficiently in urban stop and go driving. The fuel economy that I'm seeing, 38 miles to the gallon and mostly city driving. Got to admit, that's pretty impressive for a crossover this size. Your mileage may vary, as they say. 
This is a pre-production prototype, and while it shouldn't make a difference, the trip computer gave me wildly different numbers during different tests. I think I saw 35 mpg cruising at 70 miles an hour on the highway. I can say for sure that harshness is not an issue. Toyota says it tuned the suspension for the RAV4 on the sporty side, you know, for a crossover anyways. Venza is calibrated for comfort. Here comes a big bump. Soaks it up really nicely, and these days, man, we could all use a little comfort, huh? Does it bob around like Grandma's Jello mold, the one with fruit cocktail in it? Uh, not at all. It's pretty composed, but it's not a BMW X6. The ride height is elevated, but not so much to feel tippy. Venza and RAV4 are the same width, but this one feels wider from behind the wheel. Like any hybrid, coasting and braking sends power back to the battery. Here, the pedal feel when transitioning from regenerative braking to the actual physical disc brakes is really well done. It's very, very smooth. Um, also, at low speeds, if you can listen carefully, there's a bit of electric whine. That's the pedestrian warning tone coming through the cabin, and it can't be turned off. Other than the sound of the warning tone, that pretty much disappears at speeds of over 15 miles an hour. Venza is a pretty quiet vehicle, and I like the weight of the steering wheel. Not too heavy, not too light. There are a number of ways to see how efficiently or inefficiently you're driving. There's no tachometer that's been replaced by an efficiency gauge that clearly displays when you're charging or discharging the battery. When the throttle is pushed to the carpet, you will notice the revs of the four-cylinder. It's not overly noisy, it's just that Venza is generally hushed. I'm on record that the hybrid system in the RAV4 is more refined than the standard powertrain. What you feel and hear from the hybrid system is what you'd expect from Toyota. The gasoline engine feathers on very nicely. It's unobtrusive. Put your foot hard into it, and there is a bit of that rubber bandy dynamic, sort of like a continuously variable transmission. But overall, you know, it's very, very well done, as you would expect from Toyota. It might be a crossover, but I'll wager that few Venzas will see hardcore family schlepping duties, gauging by the people reacting to it, and there were a few, seems like it appeals to empty nesters treating themselves to something more polished, a Lexus RX for those who don't need the badge, or extra power, or extra cost. Not everyone wants to look like Ranger Rick. Benza comes standard with Toyota Safety Sense 2.0, which is their suite of active electronic safety gear. It includes automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection and bicyclist detection, automatic high beams, and a full range adaptive cruise control system. It's uh, pretty good stuff. Blind spot warning and rear cross traffic alert too. On the highway, lane tracing helps to keep the car centered in its lane, but it does wander a bit within the stripes. Again, this is the mid-tier XLE model, and I've got to say, I'm not sure you need to move up to the limited model for pampering. For starters, the materials are nudging up on Lexus grade. Some of the textures have a very rich look. Does this detail need to be here? Uh, no, but glad it is. Any of the average grade plastic is below sight level. The dark cabin does seem to soak up light like a black hole, though. The one reason you'd want the limited model is its optional stargaze panoramic roof. The fixed glass switches from clear to frosted with the push of a button. The lip of the console door keeps the heated seat buttons from being triggered accidentally. There's wireless phone charging, too. Apparently, Toyota product planners haven't heard that many people highly prefer a volume knob to touch controls. The upgraded JBL audio system is good, not exceptional by audiophile standards. Want leather seats? Not in a Venza, any Venza. The best you'll get is Softex synthetic, can't step too far into Lexus territory. The cloth panels are more than grippy and breathable. The pattern reminds me of beach washed sand. The bolstering hugs my torso nicely. Big folk, you might want to pay attention to that on your test drive. The expected storage is here, nothing creative like the shelves in Highlander and RAV4. Venza is equipped like a sanctuary, not a locker room. 
Most Venzas come standard with a 7-inch touchscreen interface. This one is upgraded to the 12.3-inch display, and it looks good sitting up there in the traffic's line of sight. It can be arranged to suit your needs. The response is excellent, and the graphics are especially readable. There are touch-sensitive shortcut selectors below the screen. If you haven't heard, Toyota has added Android Auto. There's Amazon Alexa as well. Obviously, you can see that there's Apple CarPlay too. No, it is not wireless. The Limited is available with a bird's eye view camera system, as well as a big 10 inch color head up display that would look like it's floating here. You were mentioning that headroom back there is an inch and a half less than RAV4. You're finally listening. I was, but only because you weren't blathering on about world domination for once. Hardy har har, and I'm supposed to be the evil twin. Uh, yes, uh, it is less, but at five foot nine, I have about this much, so it's really not an issue. Head, knee, foot, and legroom are all pretty generous in the Venza, but the door openings, though, a little bit on the small side, and they don't open very wide, so getting car seats in and out here might be a little bit of a hassle. Cushions are high enough so that thigh support is excellent, though they don't slide fore and aft to max out leg or cargo room. Door pockets, of course, but a little bit on the small side. Sometimes cars don't get a seat pocket here. Good to see, too. Glad that Toyota didn't cheap out. Phone charging won't be an issue. The center spine, not too intrusive, so you can actually get three people back here. If you're thinking about getting that trick panoramic roof, it lowers headroom by about an inch. Two full-sized adults will be very comfortable back here. A third will be just fine for short trips across town. Really, Venza's a useful crossover. Let's talk about design. Venza's silhouette stands out from a distance. Toyota calls it a coupe-like shape. I just can't bring myself to call a four-door crossover a coupe. I just can't. Uh, it looks good. It looks swoopy. Tail lights flare out from the body. They're practically shelves. The closer you look, the more detail you see, clearly positioned as an upscale ride. There are no random creases running this way and that in the sheet metal like other Toyotas. The lamps run deep into the quarter panels, visually giving Venza a longer look. Two things give me pause. It seems to me it would be easy to take this and tuck it under here for a cleaner look. And the rear turn indicators are as small and low as the fronts are large and high. And it's not something I normally gripe about, but these are hard to see. Venza might be longer than RAV4, but it does have that sloped rear window. So if you're a slave to fashion, you're going to be sacrificing some utility. The tailgate is kicked to open, forgot to show that. Venza's load floor is on the high side. Underneath, there's a real spare and a place to stash the security shade. It doesn't have to be left in the garage. Every crossover I've tested has lash points, not Venza. Bag hooks, a power port, and remote seat releases are missing too. I'm an average sized guy and would have to crawl up into the trunk to drop the seat backs. A more genteel way to do it would be to go through the back door. They fold pretty darn flat. Notice that there's no 40-20-40 split seat option or ski pass-through. Either would be handy when taking a crew up to the slopes. Venza's 28.8 cubic foot cargo hold is definitely smaller than RAV4's at 37.6. And the TP does not lie. The RAV4 hybrid will easily swallow up nine packs of softness and absorbency. I couldn't get more than seven in here without scrunching them up when closing the lift gate. The swept rear glass keeps large boxes from being loaded back here. There's a reason why it's hip to be square. Time to wrap this up with red light, green light. Green lights. Being the only powertrain available in North America, Toyota makes the efficient hybrid system a completely normal thing, right down to a standard transmission selector. The sleek styling is some of the best Toyota has done in years, and Venza sets the right tone from the driver's seat. It's comfortable, drives well, and the interior looks good. Yellow lights. The all-wheel drive hybrid powertrain adds expense, and there's no choice. Other markets have options. If you want leather seating, it's simply not available. The pedestrian warning tone heard inside at low speeds might annoy some. Red lights. The style means fashion over utility. The Venza has no more room inside than the smaller RAV4 and much less cargo capacity. Rear turn signals are small, low, and dim, uh, just like my evil twin. Uh, they almost seem like an afterthought. And the premium price for fancier clothes seems a bit high. 
Hard to know if the first Venza failed to catch on in the United States because of the economic times it launched in, or its vague station wagony design. This one has a stronger identity and purpose. Plus, the standard hybrid powertrain adds polish and efficiency. Call it Venza, call it Harrier, all predict this rig will get the name that every automaker hopes for, successful. I asked Toyota about a plug-in powertrain like the one in RAV4 Prime, and it said there are no plans right now. But if the Prime is as successful as it seems to be, the 5,000 allotted for the U.S. this year have vaporized off dealer lots. You have to believe the company is looking at Prime as a new franchise. You might have seen Martin Campbell in the driver's seat during the running footage trying to give Modico a break. We mask up because I believe in engineering and science, not myths and politics. Safety first, right? Yep. Always wear a mask. Indoors, outdoors. Everywhere. <laughs> for everybody, not just for yourself, for everybody around. And just to clarify, the car that we knew as the first Venza was never a Harrier, and the Harrier and Lexus RX became differently styled models starting with the third generation. It's widely believed that the RX is the vehicle that built Lexus. When it first showed up in the U.S., demand outstripped supply for years. It's been the brand's best-selling vehicle since it went on sale. That's my look at the all-new Venza. You're still here at the end of the video, so I'm assuming you're at least mildly entertained. I suggest subscribing to this channel and clicking notifications. And another reason to do that is I often give a fun fact at the end of the video. This one is about the name Harrier. Uh, what is it? Well, it's either the Harrier jump jet, a fighter jet that takes off and lands vertically, or a bird of prey in the Hawk family. Yeah, I looked these things up. Um, I'm really not sure why Toyota didn't go with the Harrier name here in the United States. It's not like Venza is beloved or anything. It did go away for a while. Oh well, Harrier. I guess it reminds people that they're getting hairier and need a haircut. I know I do. <laughs> That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.